Hi there, I'm Danny Flex and welcome to the latest edition of Seconds Out Flex Expectations. I'm here every Thursday, 4.30pm to look ahead to the boxing action over the weekend. And there's a number of shows scheduled for this weekend, but one takes precedence and not because it's a gripping, compelling 50-50 fight, um, unfortunately, but it does involve the biggest star in the sport today, Canelo Alvarez. Um, he defends his WBC and Super WBA Super Middleweight titles against Avni Yildirim. This is seen more as a, an hors d'oeuvre, if you like, or, or a starter before Canelo gets around to unifying, if it all goes his way, the rest of the main Super Middleweight World titles, starting with Billy Joe Saunders in May and then potentially Caleb Plant in September. Um, so the zone viewers, as a result of the uh, broadcaster getting the Saunders fight, packaging it as a two fight deal for Canelo, get the Yildirim fight as well. And Yildirim has been waiting for his mandated WBC shot um, for two years, really, since a contentious defeat to Anthony Durrell in what then was a vacant WBC title fight. Yildirim was narrowly behind on two cards, widely ahead on the third. Um, when an accidental headbutt caused the fight to end prematurely. I think it was in round 10, maybe 11. Um, and he was coming on strong at the time as well. Um, a lot of people feel that Yildirim would have eventually stopped um, Durrell and got his world title not too long, maybe three or four fights after a crushing third round defeat to Chris Eubank Jr., um, which a lot of people are still bringing up now ahead of the Canelo fight, as you can imagine. Canelo, on the other hand, in those two years since Yildirim last fought, has actually competed three times and against a very good level of opposition, um, beating Daniel Jacobs and then stopping Sergei Kovalev up at light heavyweight before dropping back down to super middle to comprehensively outpoint Callum Smith um, to win those two super middleweight belts he now holds. Um, so while... Uh, Yildirim, already a huge underdog in terms of ability and quality of opposition, has been sitting on the bench, if you like. Canelo has been um, active and against really good quality opponents. Um, so the mismatch that the vast majority of people outside Yildirim can't believe this will be looks likely, unfortunately. And I interviewed Yildirim not too long ago um, with his trainer, Joel Diaz, highly respected trainer, of course, out of California. Um, and they seem confident, they seem, you know, game and, and hard working. But there's a lot of things counting against the German based Turk. Um, I think I've got that right. Um, although they are training in Turkey for this one. He's quite limited technically, um, decent pressure fighter, um, tough, durable. I think the Eubank result was more of an aberration. Eubank. Landed the punch of his life while the two were exchanging early in the fight. Bit of a mistake, perhaps, on Yildirim's part to get involved so early on. Um, but yeah, generally tough, generally got a good chin and very game, good work rate. Um, but yeah, he's been inactive. He hasn't fought a great quality of opposition. He, not too long ago, only just edged past a veteran Lalenga Mock, which isn't a great result for him. Um, he's never really beaten a, a world-class opponent. I think it's fair to say. And I think his power is being overrated, certainly by his team in the build-up as well. I know Joel Diaz believes that his man can hurt Canelo and that the opposite is true. Well, the opposite is true. You know, Canelo's a, a proven puncher at middleweight and super middle, even at light heavy. But I'm not sure the same is true um, of Yildirim, who's never really rocked or stopped anyone of... Well, he's never really fought anyone of a particularly higher level apart from Eubank Jr. where he lost and Darrell where officially he lost although it could be he was coming on strong in that fight towards the end. So I think his power is being overrated a little bit and if he can't hurt Canelo then the only way to defeat him theoretically is to outbox him and I don't see anything in his history fight footage that suggests he's got anything like the skills to do so. Um, Canelo is right at the peak of his powers. Um, his de defence is exemplary, the upper body movement. His footwork, which was always good, but not particularly quick, has certainly improved in terms of the speed of it. Um, his hand speed, his shot selection particularly, is, is mesmerising at times. Um, 
and he just seems to be getting better. I mean, I say he's at his peak, but who knows? Until we see him up against the very best opposition that can be found, I suppose we don't really know um, just how much better he can get. Um, but he certainly seems several levels above yield rim, and I hate to join the chorus who are saying the same thing, but what can you do? You've got to call a spade a spade. And I know I had my fingers burned um, when I called Josh Warrington against Maurizio Lara a, rematch, uh, a mismatch. Rematch is coming. A mismatch. Um, and then Lara, the Mexican, ended up you know, really laying a beat down on, on Josh Warrington that night. I don't see the same happening. Lightning doesn't strike in the same place twice. So hopefully it doesn't strike me um, a second time. But I see um, Canelo winning pretty much as he pleases. He's not the sort of fighter that goes steaming out to get a knockout in the first round. He tends to take his time, measured approach, um, sizes up his opponent, gets his rhythm, gets his distance, and then starts to break his opponent down. But when he sees what's coming back at him isn't the same as from a Danny Jacobs, for example, or even a Sergei Kovalev, certainly in the first half of their fight. Um, I think he will start to realise he can win pretty much when he wants. And it, there's no sense in him staying in the ring for longer than he has to. I would say he'll get the stoppage round about round five, six, something like that. Um, and then moving on with, you know, a showcase performance, if you like, and getting people excited about the fight with Billy Joe Saunders, WBO champion in May. Um, so we'll look forward to that. Um, but I still think it'll be worth watching for the five or six rounds it lasts. You know, even if Canelo was on a bag for six rounds, and I'm not comparing Yield Rim to a heavy bag. I'm sure he'll put up a lot more opposition than that. But even that would be worth watching, although whether you'd pay for it or not is open to question. But I'm a big Canelo fan. I think he's an excellent fighter, versatile um, and intelligent um, box puncher, which is kind of the style that I'm into. Front foot counter puncher. Um, yeah, I think, you know, it's well worth watching. I'll be watching it, certainly. I don't know if you're watching it live or if I'll uh, watch it on the zone later on, but I've got a zone subscription, so I'm not about to waste it. Um, there are other events taking place this weekend. As I have uh, recalled this vlog, there's some doubt over whether the um, Frank Warren show will still go ahead on Saturday night. Um, it may have been cancelled by the time you watch this, given Leon Woodstock, the British title challenger in the main event, has tested positive for COVID-19. Um, so we'll not be competing uh, on, on the night, regardless, even if the show does go ahead. Um, but there's other things to get excited about on the Canelo card, for example. I think Julio Martinez's WBC flyweight title defence against McWilliams Arroyo. I expect Martinez to win fairly clearly, but I think it'll be an entertaining fight. Also, uh, Arroyo's never been stopped and always comes to give his best tough Puerto Rican warrior. So that's worth watching. Um, you aforementioned Anthony Durrell. Comes back after his defeat to David Benavidez against Kyron Davis on Saturday night on Showtime. Um, so that's worth watching as well. Um, and yeah, just just good weekend of action. Um, it's a shame the Frampton Herring World Title Fight or Herring Frampton got postponed. Um, it's going to be in Dubai in about a month's time instead. Um, and now the Frank Warren Show, as I've said, may not even go ahead. But there's still plenty to enjoy. Um, Canelo especially. Um, always worth watching him if you get a chance. And I should also mention over in New Zealand. Um, I think DAZN are showing this as well. So another reason to get a DAZN subscription. Particularly in the UK where I believe it's still very, very cheap. Um, Junior Farr unbeaten. Going up against former world champion Joseph Parker. In a really intriguing heavyweight clash. Pat. Um, venue of fans in New Zealand, which will be nice to see um, as the UK begins to take steps to come out of lockdown itself. Um, get that buzz back for fans in attendance. And I think it'll be a really exciting heavyweight clash for as long as it lasts. So yeah, get, get on that as well if you get the chance. So what I want to hear from you guys is, what can Yildirim do? I guess is the main question because I haven't been able to find a way. But if Yildirim is going to um, give Canelo trouble or even defeat him, what should his tactics be? Tell me what you think. Um, don't just reply saying he's a complete no hope or he's got no chance. because That's not what I'm asking. If you think that, there's not much point commenting on what I've asked. Um, but tell me what tactics you think he should employ to give him any semblance of a chance to beat Canelo. And then Billy Joe Saunders um, in May, do you think he has a chance to beat Canelo? And if so... How does he do it? Um, because if we are discounting Yildirim uh, as a valid threat, is Saunders a valid threat and why? 
And if you want to shove in some predictions from some of the other fights that I've talked about, particularly uh, Joseph Parker against Junior Farr, that would be much appreciated. And I will respond to some of the comments. I'll be back on Monday for reflections, looking back on all the action, 4.30pm, and the same time on the following Thursday for the next Flex Expectations. As always, really appreciate your time, and I will see you all soon. Cheers. Thank you.